but he's in the middle. Checks back against Carter and scores. That is a typical for the Amina Margot. Mark quickly gets it back again. Oh, what a goal! Well, that sums up her season. Um, we're back. Roses are red, violets are blue. North London is red. So get uh, stuff, Spurs. That, <laughs> that didn't work. Hurry. That was absolutely awful. Um, much like Spurs. But... <laughs> back to back again after the Continental Tires Cup. We didn't do a preview because of personal commitments, but we're back. We're happy. And let's get into this. As always, I'm joined by the audacious Adam and the magnificent Matt. Matt, how are you? I'm not too bad. Still coming off that high from uh, Sunday. It was fantastic atmosphere and I was just loving it. I was able to take a bit of a break and watch this game, which was great as well. And Adam, how are you, mate? I mean, I'm, I'm happy. I mean, I audacious. I know I saw you last night, but you know. I know. Well, yeah, we did. So, yeah, audacious. I mean, I've not had that one before. Um, I've been I've been called many things. Um, oh. many, I can't, many I can't repeat on here. Someone please remind me not to use descriptive words when it comes to Adam. Because <laughs> it just floats up his ego and it drives me nuts. Well, For the it, audio it, listeners, I'm now sitting here with a face palm on my hand. Yeah, even more face. than it already has. Um, but no, great night out. Great night out in Meadow Park. Um, Absolutely. It was, a few, it was but, zero, but yeah. Yeah. Was a, we're, in the, we're in the North Bank together. Cracking game. Um, really good North London derby. Um, we'll get, there's a few, and it was a first time for me in there as well, which was nice, which we'll get to. But yeah, great, great atmosphere. Really good attendance, actually, for a Conti Cup game yeah, midweek it night. 3,168 people there. Um, Emily Hayslip was our referee at Meadow Park, and every, as everyone knows, the full time score was 3 3, and mm-hmm. we beat the Tottenham Hotspur on penalties because they decided to be a little bit spursy, yeah, um, as the dictionary would, would define. I should say 3,618, so it was even better than that. Oh, wow, that, was, that looks like the BBC's got that wrong as well. That's they what got the, BBC the one says. and the six the wrong way, wrong way yeah. round. No, that is what the BBC says. <laughs> Great. Then I've got it wrong. Thanks Absolutely. for that. But it shows what an amazing um, home crowd we've got going at the moment. I mean, the North Bank absolutely. was absolutely rammed. I mean, like, we were struggling to to find room to stand. Um, abs- and, the, and they were Yeah, singing. we were kind of like a third of the way in. By the end of it, we were just out on the edge. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, no, my, as everyone can hear, my voice is very, very, very sore. Um, but let's get into the lineups. So in goal we had Sabrina D'Angelo, no, and then the back line of Noel Maritz, Jen Beatty, Leah Cadina, and Katie McCabe. And then in the middle we had Katrin Molakul, Kyra Cooney Cross, and then up to, uh, then we had on the on the right we had Chloe Lacas, then Freedom Leonard and Mornham in and that ten roll. Stina Black up top, and on the wing we had on her return, Vivian Miedemar. Um, On the bench, we had Manuela Zinsberger, Lotte Vorbemoy, Steph Catley, Leah Volti, Caitlin Ford, Victoria Palova, Nessie Russo, and Amanda Illestead. Um, and then, obviously, with Tottenham Hotspur, we had Voitkova, James, Bueller, Bartrip, Neville, Petzelberger, Graham, uh, Thomas, uh, Bizet, Ill. Ildesoy. Yeah. Naz and Clinton on the bench. They had Zardowski, Turner, England, Percival, Zhang, Spencer, Ian, and Pierce. Yes. So, what are your thoughts on the lineup for the first of two North London derbies? And um, how are we feeling pre match? Were we ready for this after the Chelsea high? Um, I was hoping that we weren't going to rebound 
that was always my theory. We we we, we got the, the big high of the weekend. I'm thinking mm-hmm. we I don't want it to suddenly be a massive swing and we we fumble this one. That yeah, we, we win the hard one and then we lose the stupid one. And looking at the team, it was mixed, and my eyes were immediately drawn to the fact that, and I know I know why we're doing it. It's, I, I don't want to criticise it. I'm not saying it's wrong. I think Jonas is right, but playing Yembiti in a back four, just ah, did doesn't it again. work. Doesn't work. Doesn't, doesn't work. work. And we said this to each other about six or seven times last night. This is not working. <laughs> yeah, and this is working. And but, the problem, but there is a saving grace later in the pod. We will talk about. So obviously, uh, Lotta and Amanda are our starting centre backs, and they played against Chelsea. Um, obviously, there are other defenders that need game time. Got Kadina, who's young prospect coming from Barcelona, needs more time to bed in in that left centre back position. Playing alongside Beatty, a very experienced right centre back. But the problem is, as we said before, Beatty, Beatty's a back three defender. She gets caught in the back two, and the problem is, you've got Beatty who's not comfortable in the back four, and Kadina who hasn't fully made those connections and we're having to ask her to make a connection with a defender who can't really play that formation which is a bit awkward great to see we're sitting on the flip side great to see Maritz back at right back great to see her get some games McCabe just seems to play every game every minute now she's now back at the left back rather than right back also great to see Sabs in goal um I think we've sort of maybe moved away from this I'll use a certain keeper in tactical situations to Marnie's the first choice and Sabs the, the cup keeper um great to see Cool get some more game time um obviously in play of the weekend, but she's she's sort of become the Conti Cup midfielder of choice at the moment, and obviously your favourite, Kara Cooney Cross. Um, and the return of Miedema. Um, unconventional position for her. I don't know if I said it, was just trying to do something else tactically. Um, but it was great to finally get to see her get some minutes, and she looked good. Um, some nice touches, um, nice passes in the box. Um, just needs to get a goal, and then hopefully, like Beth Mead, she'll be on her way. But it was good to see her get a proper run out, first ever start since her ACL. In fact, I think it's actually been almost a year to the day since she did her ACL against Lyon. So, um, no, good to be back on the pitch starting. That's another milestone ticked off. Um, but yeah, that the only the only quibble I had was the defence, but the rest of the team I thought was was pretty okay. <clears throat> We knew it was going to be a rotated side, didn't we? It was just a case yeah. of what was going to happen. You do kind of wonder and sort of have it in the back of your mind because they don't know each other inside out. Adam's mentioned about Leia Cardena, yeah. that, she, that she's not 100% there. You also saw it against Southampton in that game mm-hmm. where she, she, she was over-aggressive in some of the challenges and she sort of, I think she was... I think the best analogy I can come up with is she was like a year, really young puppy that really just wanted to go out there and impress. And unfortunately, she was over aggressive in Southampton. This time, she she looked to try to right some of those wrongs. But I think um, what's going to happen is I, I hope she gets a little bit more game time. Mm. Um, the question will be whether it not be a couple of sub appearances in the WSL. Um, I would have, I would have thought that she would probably uh, perhaps might want to make more than those thirteen appearances that she made against uh, for Barcelona last season. Mm. Um, I, I I feel a bit sorry for Sabrina for this one as we'll go through it. Yeah, I feel with this thing it's heavily rotated, so I'm not expecting the same fluency that we had at the weekend against Chelsea because this is this is 100%. I want to say B team is probably maybe a bit too um bit too harsh on it, but it is the subs have come on. So there is not going to be the same unity and connections, um, but more of, a, more of a chance to see how strong some of the individual performances are that can maybe make a case to start in the first team. The big issue was, is I, as much as we may diss Spurs um, as Arsenal fans and mock them, if you look at the group, they are the strongest team in the group. You know, they are, they are in terms of league positioning in the WSL, they are ahead of Bristol City, Reading and Southampton. Uh, that's frank. So we always knew this was going to be the Reading hardest game in the group. Reading on, well, they're out, obviously, but they're still in our group. We still we get to play them. But in our in our mini Conti Cup group table, um, Spurs were the hardest opposition that we were going to have to face. And I felt, I don't know, thinking back, if this was Joe Montemuro in the previous era, he would have probably gone full strength. He would have probably he would have started all our our best eleven and and gone for it. And I I applaud Joe um, Jonas's bravery for for trusting his squad to believe that they can get the result rather than just defaulting onto, I'm going to start Russo and Mead and Ford for another game and then we'll likely play them again um, this weekend. So I applaud him for his bravery. It was a gamble, 
but if it pays off it means more minutes and more minutes and more legs and more experience etc cetera, etc cetera. so that was my feeling is if, if this was this was going to be the hardest game of the group and it's going to be even harder because of what we were going to have to do for our squad no absolutely i couldn't agree with you more there adam as you as always um so we've had a lot of swings and roundabouts all the way through to about 17 minutes um we had a cross from the left hand right hand side from ashley neville into the box mm. finds martha thomas and she gets her head to it and it comes past sabrina d'angelo at close range into the bottom right hand corner prior to this um we've had attempts from vivian miedema katrin molecule chloe lucas was this a defensive switch off or a case of rotation changes with the squad i.e mm. gen b e in a back four or gen b and Kadina playing together. I'm not specifically targeting Gen B, but no, it's no. just the examples there, that come to mind throughout that game. There's 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 a few mistakes in this, and the first one is is the player gate. I think it's a Neville with a cross. You say it was, yeah. So she gets the, the right byline because a pass managed to go between McCabe and uh, Viv, click you know, through clean through them. They don't stop the pass. Gets to her on the on the, on the byline. Cross comes in. Mm-hmm. And Thomas just out muscles BT in the air. BT is, I don't know, it was like her feet were super glued on the floor. Um, didn't get off the didn't get off the air, didn't read it, and Martha basically bodies her, and it's a very it's a good header, and Sabs has got no chance. And we talk about again about rotation, it's a heavy rotated side. Viv is getting back to full fitness. McCabe's now gone from being a right back to a left back in, in you know in, in the following game, and BT is only playing Comte Cup games. There's a reason for that. She's playing in the back four. She's not necessarily comfortable in. This was my old feeling was, and this it, it played out as exactly as I thought it was. We we are playing with basically an arm time behind our back. We are going to have these defensive problems and we're going to come into more of them as, as the uh, pod progresses. It was all about whether our front line could basically bail out the defence. It's the old Kevin Keegan, you score three, we'll score four. Or in this case, you score three, we'll score three. So it was just a case of, can we, can we, mit- can we, manage the defence enough that we don't you know, concede so many goals unfortunately it wasn't the case yeah the mistakes were around BT the left the left side of the defence it just wasn't a good goal and it was just the, the frustration was we had as you say really good chance early on but Moritz has crossed the effect onto the bar and you think we're on top and then just out of nowhere Spurs just mug a goal out of nowhere and it yeah. you, and and that was at the for us it was at the other end of the pitch you just see that and you're just like have they scored Oh no! <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. It Just was, it was kind of like, oh god, here we go, sort mm. of thing. Because all of a sudden, this little tiny little blue corner down at South Stands, but all these fans come out, and I'm like, I've only seen five of your fans. Where did you all come from? Because obviously there was five of them that boldly walked past. We mm. did have to put out with a ball girl who was a Tottenham fan, mm. which was okay. She kind of went quiet once we started get get got going so to speak um but matt what are your thoughts on uh they got with the goalkeepers union on that is there was there any stopping that i don't think so when i watched on the replays on the highlights no i don't think she's going to say that i think what's happened is jen's reacted too late to the ball i don't think she actually knows that martha thomas thomas is on her and Mm -hmm. because of that I don't know if it's communication error. I don't know if it's because Jen hasn't looked properly around. It just feels like Jen used used to be a very good reader of the ball, and mm-hmm. I, don't, I don't know what's happened, but all of a sudden, age. It's, I think it's. I think it's just age. I think it's just age. I think it's just she's getting to that point of career. Sadly, <laughs> I think we kind of know that Jen's sort of on her last legs, but it just seems to be. At this moment, so I know age comes out and you get a little bit slower, etc. But sometimes that doesn't deter you. I mean, there's some players out there that are playing into their 40s. There's some of them playing. Exactly. Christy so, um, is one of them. Yeah, some some people can defy it and some people succumb to it. It affects yeah. everybody. Um, again, it's like I said, you, 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 she's playing in a formation she's not comfortable with. Yeah, but the thing is with Jen Beatty, she although all this is coming going on, she will have that pure moment of brilliance. Which yeah. well, we will get on to later. So, I'm very yeah, excited to talk will. about yeah. later. But I'm itching towards that. So it's not a negative approach on Gen B. It's just yeah, what happens. What we see, mm. unfortunately. Spurs being Spurs, they could only hold on the lead for two, two whole minutes. Um, Kevin p- cleverly picked out pass on the left hand side from Frida Leonard and Mornham. 
into the centre of the box to Stina Blackstenius, who slots it past uh, Bar- Barbara Vojkova mm-hmm. into the bottom right corner. What's the zero mm-hmm. of the response we wanted, Matt? Yeah, there's nothing better than going and scoring a goal to get yourself back in. I mean, we talked earlier about, or in the last podcast, uh, the Alessia's, Alessia's goal straight after Amanda's goal. It just mm. helps you get that little bit more confident. Whereas if you're getting one back straight after a goal, look no further than, uh, again, Saturday, Sunday's game against Chelsea. Chelsea go on back, the momentum sort of switch, switches. And they're hoping, right, okay, you got back on level, make sure it doesn't happen again. And <laughs> I know it sounds really odd, but that's the mentality that you have to have. Make sure that you do not make a mistake. Make sure that ball does not go back back in the, <clears throat> your net again. If anything, make sure it goes back in their net again. Mm. So then the momentum switches and you're on the front foot and go from there. And it's, it's it, it, things like this happen in these sorts of games. Um, let's just say I'm glad this wasn't the WSL match. Yeah. Put it this way, for me personally, with this team, I think it was just, it's the tipping point. It's the warm-up game before the game that, for me, that seriously matters. Every game matters, yeah. but yeah. for me, the WSL is a bigger fish to fry out of these two back-to-back North London derbies, personally. Mm. And it's, oh, it's just really intense. Me, mm. like, I think... My, I think my, myself and Lucy took round at you, Adam, and the, uh, after that, I said, the game on. Game on. And it was it, really, it, truly game it's, on. It set the tone, and it's such and I, such a beautiful um, finish, because I mentioned in the previous pod, Stina didn't, she missed a really good chance to make it 5-1. This was obviously maybe a harder chance, but it was just, it was funded home with such sort of authority. It's a really good pick by Frieda, the the rapid run down the right and the, and the, and the low cross sweeps it in immediately after Spurs equalised. You think, right, okay, springboard. <clears throat> Away we go. And it pretty that pretty much was that that two minutes was the whole game as we'll as we'll get into. Um and it was just a case of, well, we've got to try and, you know, how do our tech functions. But yeah, I love that for Cena. Another goal. I mean that's another goal for Frieda and Stina in the Conti Cup. That's free mm-hmm. Three ga- three goals in a row, three games in a row. Goal for Stina, three games, yeah. three goals, they, three games. Them two can't stop scoring and assisting each other at this point. I know. I'm loving it. But I know, da, absolutely. Da, da. <laughs> <laughs> About eleven minutes later, uh, we've got the eight minute mark. Um, Ex Arsenal player Jessica Naz makes it two one with a right footed shot from the centre of the box into the bar bottom right corner, assisted by Martha Thomas. The fantasy football fans for the WSLs must be kicking themselves if they've held out for her yeah. in the last few games. I'm definitely one of them, which is really rather irritating. Mm. Um, but between the between the two, the two these two goals that have gone in past Sabrina D'Angelo, um, she made a, a total of three brilliant saves in between. She was straight on the ball. One, she was protected by two of the Arsenal defenders. Mm. What are your thoughts on on Sabrina's game so far? Like at this thirty minute mark? Yeah, it's difficult Even for us because two in, if you mm, know what I mean. It's difficult because obviously we are um, at the other end of the pitch. I remember, I do remember there was one. I think it was a deflected effort from the edge of the box that she managed to take. I, I just think with one with Sabrina, I think she was not helped by her defence. I think she did what she could, and I think you know, kept in the game. Perfectly competent keeper, but again, it's some of the chances. I don't. I don't like the goal, the first goal we mentioned earlier, there's nothing on Sabrina for that one. I might maybe question her on this one potentially, but again, this comes from Naz breaking through BT and Kadena in the defence. They, 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 she just roars straight through them, and and their legs are, again are just like, in, like stuck in treacle. Takes it round the keeper. Sabrina obviously commits herself. She's closing it down. Takes it round and finishes from. Quite a difficult angle, actually. I'd say she tucks it in at the near post, but it's it's not an easy finish. And again, it's just it's just another body blow because just oh, right, we've done so well, we got level. I think we had some really good chances. I think McCabe had a what I would call it classes nearly one of the greatest volleys you will ever score. Hit it so purely. We're talking about keepers. The Spurs keeper had a good game. Let's, let's be fair, credit where credit's due. That's but their Spurs keeper did very very well, and. It just felt frustrating that we had this spell of dominance where we were cranking up and we had corners in and we were building up pressure and we were having efforts and raids on the wing. And then Spurs just went up the other end and got, just got another goal out of nowhere and just puts us all back on the back foot again. Um, 
and yeah, that was that was very frustrating. I was thinking, we got you know, we got to go again. <laughs> we got to find that goal again. No, if absolutely. We can't, we can't lose the Spurs. We can't lose the Spurs. Not like oh, this. Oh no, we've never lost the Spurs since they come up. So absolutely. it's not going to happen. Hmm. I firmly believe in the mentality of my club. Yeah. So, um, not two minutes later, although we were two one down, Kyra Kuna cross breezes past. Not one, not two, but three Spurs players. Mm. and takes a right-footed shot down the centre of the box straight into Barbara uh, Wojtkova's arms. Man, yeah. It was an easy shot to save. Save. I will uh, hold my hands up to that. I'm not in the goalkeeper's union, but you are. But how sensational has Kyra Cooney Brush been since she's arrived? She's just getting better and better and better. And I'm sure everybody's a bit bored of how excited I am to have her. <laughs> <laughs> well, just... Before we we'll go back to the goal, my my issue with that goal is that Leia starts too high. Mm-hmm. Because she starts too high, she can't track back the runner in enough time. That means that Sabrina has to come out and meet the meet Naz for it. And if that's happened, then that that's a cause for concern, and that's a communication error. Um, that and that needs to be stamped out as much as possible. But on Kyra, um. She has her moments of magic and it's times like that where those game changers will in the future get you those three three point eight three points, the six points sure or you could even say get those game winning goals like a McCabe has done against Man City not once but twice in the past. Um it would be not rude to say that her potential is very high. It's very obvious to see that. It's very much a wait and see what she can do because this is her first season. Um, whether or not she's going to be starting games is, is obviously going to depend on what happens in the coming year. Uh, trying to say, say, say that as positive as possible because we don't know what's going to happen a year from now. We don't know anything about it. I'm sure the players are considering what that, what's going to happen in the year's time because of contracts and things like that but I imagine Kyra will probably have a bigger influence similar to Kathleen Milico, Victoria Palova will have they are the midfield of the future mm-hmm. and it's very exciting but there are times where you look at it and say which one of them is going to be the defensive defensive player that's mm-hmm. going to be the Leah Volti of the team in the future and that's the worry at the moment. I don't see that them. I see Katrina as more of a second player. I see Kyra as more of a Kim sort of player, and I see Victoria as the one that will do the all the hard work. But I think she's better in that central area as the attacking midfielder over the other like, two. If I'm honest, if I was to look I'm at actually going to oh. challenge you on that, Matt, because I had this conversation with someone when I was waiting to go into. Meadow Park. Obviously, the players were pulling up. Let uh, Beth and Biv had come in. Let uh, Leia Kadina had come in, banging out the tunes. We were like, maybe the whole queue waiting for Meadow Park to open. We're all spurning our heads because we wanted to know who was playing the, like the epic '90s rave music coming in to Meadow Park. Um, what this person had said to me, they think that Kyra Cooney Cross. Is eventually going to take Leah Volti's spot. Yeah. And Palova is going to be that Kim player. Yeah. And the more I think about it, I know I've said stuff in the I've said it the other way around in the past. The more I think about it, the more it makes sense. What do you think on that? Adam, I know we've had a conversation about yeah. this. Just want to hear Matt's thoughts mm. first. I know you're eager. eager, eager no, I'm eager just, to in it. All I'm just gonna say is I agree, and that's it. <laughs> Are you sure? Yeah, I agree. Well, uh, that is okay. exactly what I think. So that's uh, yeah. well. Let, let's just put it this way. Essentially, I've only seen her play the. Okay, she got a couple of minutes against Liverpool, but wasn't enough time. So then you go back to the, when the next game that she was actually in. That was mm-hmm. the Southampton game. She only got sixty minutes in that game. She wasn't really given the defensive responsibilities mm-hmm. in, uh, in comparison to. Katrine, Katrine was more of a defensive player in that position, and that indicates to me that Katrine's the more defensive one because she's more willing to do that. I, I see Kyra more willing to go further up the pitch 
and um and do more of the attacking than the defending at the moment and that's my only worry but this again i haven't been able to see much of that as i want to and Mm -hmm. it's not a real real fair assessment should i say at this moment in time because Mm-hmm. You can't say, say say that after they've been at the club six months and they've only played a minimal amount of minutes for the club. You want to do it after they've played maybe a, a full season and then then see have a perfect, you might have a fair assessment, but that means that Cairo needs to have those minutes in the back. And it will be um let's just see that. Let's let's wait and see what happens in January. Um before I make any because and then wait and see because there's no point in a turnaround saying this uh, but at this moment I believe Kyra's more attacking than she is defending I see Katrine as the defensive unit it didn't really work in this game compared to what when it worked in Southampton mm-hmm. um uh, and it, it does it does happen but these connections will take time to happen and it might oh, take a no, full definitely. season yeah no this is just this is me opinions will change my opinion will change over this but I never really thought of it in that sort of sense I think me and Adam had a bit of an in-depth conversation about it um, just before kickoff and there's a lot of things unraveling and people will have their opinions like that as you said they're going to have a quick opinion what I'm that is what I'm seeing at this point but again it could change before the end of the season it could be the other way around or I could stick to it you just don't know opinions change and that's what they do but let's get back to the 37th minute where they bottled it again. Mm-hmm. Katie McKay is <laughs> flying down that right ring towards me and Adam in that right-hand corner um, with Graham on her tail. She just can't keep up with her. That pinpoint low cross into Frida Leal this morning for a right-footed shot on the bottom right corner. Adam, Frida, Leonardo this morning just can't stop scoring at the moment, can she? she she's on fire. She's on fire. And you, you were talking about Kyra Cooney Cross. That all comes from Kyra mm. picking that pass. It goes through or over, it comes either over or through two defenders. And McKay bursts on the left into the corner. And, and she, mm-hmm. the decision making the final third is spot on. She gets to the byline. And I just think back again. I think back to previous games where we've had the position of the low cross and it, oh, it hits the defender, it gets blocked at the near post. She picks out Frieda in the crowd. It's a superb cross and Frieda's the rest. Frieda's the rest. It's two all. And suddenly it's like, this game's going to be anything now. This is, this is, this is insane. This is two. The last time I was, and I was winding you and yourself and Lucy up um, saying, oh, well, last time we played Spurs in the Conti Cup, um, it finished two all. <laughs> and it finished, yeah. it was two- Do you know why I got really wound up? <laughs> because you're a jinx. There is evidence of previous episodes on this pod where everything has come true. And I don't trust you as far as I can throw you. And when you know it comes what? to your predictions and your, your, your facts. This and came if true. it does go it came... wrong, I blame you, and you don't bat an eyelid, and it drives me nuts. I know. And well, yes, I, was... I just did chomp on that because you <laughs> irritate me when you go like this. Like, but as much but... as I, you, as much as I adore you as my friend, <laughs> you drive me nuts. Well, I would say is, yes, it finished two all, and I said to you last time it finished two all, and it went to penalties. So obviously, you know, history wouldn't obviously repeat itself, but yeah, two all at and half what time. Happened? Well, we'll get to that later on in the pod. <laughs> it was a, it was, and this was a, it was just a fantastically entertaining group, um, group stage game. And I think this was the beauty of Spurs playing. I think apart from Beth England, Beth England, I think was on the bench, but it was a pretty she strong. Didn't come on at all. And she didn't come on at all. Actually, come on which really surprised me. Actually, I expect they're trying to save her, keep her fresh for the, for the weekend game. Yeah, that's yeah, what worries me. But apart from that, there was time the likes of Ashley Neville, Martha Thomas, and and, and Graham and. They were going strong in this game, and we weren't. And this lent, lent itself to the possibility where it was going to be chaos, which it was. It was fantastic chaos. Mm-hmm. This is this is the Conti Cup magic, you know. We, we unfortunately, you know, if this was televised, this would, people would be swarming on it. It was fantastic entertainment. Um, two all, brilliant goal from Frida. As I said earlier, three goals in, in, in three games in the, in the League Cup. Um, you know, we were saying in earlier pods of the season, is Frida going to find that form again? But well, it looks like she has now. Um, and yeah, it was again, it was another sense of relief. So, right, okay, we're back in the game now. We just need to stop conceding goals and find another goal and all will be well. <laughs> no, absolutely. I couldn't agree more with you, but we made it to half time. It was two somehow. Two. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. I mean, Matt, you know, you, you were at home up in up in the Wirral. What, how were you feeling at half time? 
it's just one of those games where it felt like something was missing and you don't want to make any subs because you've got these the team same team again at the weekend so you don't really want to show them your cards on the on saturday and it was uh, it was really odd because so, uh, something had to give and it just felt so much like when we were talking earlier in the season i remember talking about the squad balance the cohesion and everything and it feels like it's falling flat again so i'm hoping that over the christmas period i know they'll probably won't do training or anything i hope that they have like um they have some sort of like get together i know they do a halloween parties and things like that i'm hoping that they have a huge christmas party somewhere i hope that they can be able to do some sort of team building exercise or something just so they can build each other up and get those relationships back going again because again uh world cup not enough time to a uh, collaborate go be cohesive enough compared to other teams in wsl we've got a longer break compared to other teams because of the champions because we don't have champions league also brilliant news so we get a bit of a, sh- a nice longer break they can get feel rest they can get uh, they can be like right okay ready to go for the new season uh, for the new season for the new year <laughs> new season cracking <laughs> i went quick new season you wish my life away you know what <laughs> no yes uh get get ready for the league to restart and new year new year fa cup tie reading away and things like that it's, it's just build a make sure that things like that happen so we just make sure go in this and make sure we go fighting and it goes again on saturday last game of the year go 100 percent all in make sure you leave nothing on the table get those three points that and hopefully a big goal difference and that helps helps you uh with the top of the league as well mm-hmm. no absolutely adam can i just get your thoughts on like our fighting back attitude at this point um, obviously, we went behind twice, came back twice. Fighting spirit. It's, Why it's is the, really... where's, the, where's the mentality at for us right now compared to the beginning of the season? Well, it's, I think this is the spirit that we gained from the together. To, you know, it became the buzzword of last season, but the t- togetherness, inverted commas, you know, check out the documentary. The team is cl- is this close and it, it is it is built up this fighting spirit over that last season. And we've seen it and we've needed it. At the start of the season, um, obviously we fumbled the, the Liverpool game, and I think that was really when our our team was basically at its weakest, I would say. Um, but we got the you know, the late equaliser at Man United, the double late goals against Aston Villa, um, finding a way to beat Bristol, um, winning from two 0 down at Leicester, the late late winner at, at Southampton, and I, I really do applaud the team. Obviously, you can't rely on late goals to get you through in a season; it's unsustainable. But it's really good to see this this never say die attitude with the team that that has grown and fostered um, over the uh, over, well from last season and into now. And it really came to the fore today because, as I said, we knew we were up against it. We knew that this was going to be a, a tricky one. Um, with the way we rotated and we needed every bit of that spirit and it was on full display in that first half um, kept playing our game didn't didn't change what we were doing didn't panic because of the keep to the core principles and it worked we got to two and a half time I did think there'd be some changes if I'm honest I thought he might have um, uh, changed the defense I think there was a, a maybe case what we maybe we could bring on Lotta or Amanda maybe try and secure the, the defense Again, I don't know if it was stupidity or bravery, but Yon was just like, no, I'm going to persevere with this back line. Um, despite its obvious flaws, I'm going to trust the team that they're going to manage the situation. Um... <laughs> Is that something that he's learned, though, that he has to trust the, the 11 that he's put out because yeah. of the issues from last last season Over I mean, years of players, I'm, yeah. I'm, I, I really enjoy when Jonas sticks to his guns. Um mm. I know he does it sometimes because he has to, but other times he can't. He doesn't really have that. I remember going oh, back to Burnham, for example. Yeah. And I would, I would the Chelsea the table, game. I would flip the it to figure game. Chelsea. Emma Hayes in the Arsenal game. What was it? Half time, throw subs on. Change the situation because it's not going to go in our way. Jonas is like, no, I'm not going to go and throw loads of subs on. 
I'm going to stay calm. I'm going to trust this this defense. I'm going to trust this team that they're going to, they're going to make it right themselves because he knows that deep down they are good enough. Maybe not physically, but mentally they can do it. They can get the result that they need. Um, and it is the Conti Cup. It is not the WSL. It is not Champions League. It's not FA Cup. And I know he obviously will want to win all these games. But there's elements of, I don't, you're not, you're not in a situation where in a panic you throw Lotta with a Moy on and then something stupid happens and she's ruled out of the, of the, the North London derby. And that's, that's the risk you're doing when you're, when you're trying to maybe chase it. So it was a risk. It was a gamble to, to do that. It, there were no changes at half time. I think the Spurs made any changes or they made changes early in the half, I think it was. Um, that did surprise me actually. Uh, I think that's one of the reasons why we didn't ultimately go on and win it. But, um, Credit to, to Jonas for having, again, faith in the squad um, and, and faith in the players that they would get it right. No, absolutely. The second half arrived. Uh, we had no changes from our side of the pitch. Um, me and Adam sort of said to each other, we should have changed. But I'm so happy that Jonas stuck with it. Um, but unfortunately, three three minutes into the second half, Celine visit Ildezoy, takes full of Archard advantage on the ball, given away by Katrine Molokul, mm. uh, charges down the centre of the field and passes to Jessica Naz and she slots it home to the bottom corner. This is the third time we've been behind in this game. Yeah. Could you see Spurs beating us for the first time ever after it, that one? It was in the back of my head because that's the thing that is the most amount I can't amount believe of... I've just asked that. Yeah, no, it's a fair, oh, but it's a fair question. That is the most amount of goals Spurs have, have scored against us in a match since they've they've come up. Three goals. I've never seen them. Yeah, one goal. Yeah, so two, three. And I've said this like to friends while I was leaving the ground because I said it's a it's a it's a, the laws of probability would state that between now and the event collapse of the universe, Spurs are going to beat us. It, it it is going to happen. I don't know if it'll be in our lifetime. But like if any team, any any team will beat someone and it's going to be, it's going to hurt. It's going to sting. It's going to be painful. And it'll be like, a, oh, it's been such a good run. No different from Spurs men finishing above us in the league table. It was nice when it wasn't happening. But the you, you can't outrun fate forever. At some point, Spurs will get that win. I mean, they've got the draws already. Um, to be honest, I thought the first win was going to come in that one-all draw a few seasons ago at their ground when the pitch was awful and yeah, the referee was awful. Yeah, that was the game up at... Barnet and Viv the hive, yeah. last minute. And that was that yep. was the closest. That's the closest they've come. So the part of me is thinking, please. Well, I would say that this was a bit closer than that one, well, if I'm well, honest the, with you. Well, the hive game was the, the our equaliser was an injury time. I mean that's what I mean time wise, that's they were that close to the end. Let's just it, say it, as well that there was an incident there that was very controversial. The, the Jordan well. Obskull. The Jordan yeah, Obskull. Yeah, that, 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 yeah. Everyone knows that. Everyone knows that. If you watch that game, you know how absolutely you feel about that. The goal, um, the, goal, uh, the, goal, the goal was a frustration. Molecule mm-hmm. loses the ball again. <sighs> Such great talent. Very raw. It was great at Southampton. I think this was a big, bigger step up for her. Two bigger step up for her. She has a great moment, but this was a mistake from her. Gets that muscle of the ball. Again, BT and Kadena don't cut themselves in glory. They're going full retreat. Nobody closes them down, and it's a good pass. It's a well-placed finish in the bottom corner, right in front of us. <laughs> And it's just like, I can't believe it. They've done, they've done it again. They've done it again. And we've got to try and dig ourselves out of this hole once more. Um, very, very, very frustrating. Yeah, I think I'm going to have to counter, with, counter you there with uh, about Katrin Molecule. I mean, how do you expect her to learn if we don't put her in this situation? Well, this is the thing. In I'm a this... North London derby, because that is where players grow. Absolutely. It's a bit like keepers, as I thought uh, Matt will agree with me on this. Keepers can't learn anything on the training ground until they're put in that situation. Well, you this... can train all you want, unless you're in the situation wherein you're in a live game against an opponent or whoever's coming at you, whether it's Sam Kerr, um, Elizabeth Turland, Caitlin Ford, anyone. I How was all... is that keeper, that player going to learn? No, I'm all f- I was all for Molecule being mm-hmm. put in that yeah. situation because it's sink or swim. You know, mm-hmm. it's that leap of faith. You push it, she, you know, will she fly or, or, or fall? All for, yeah. all for that, all for trying it. And it's the only way you can fully test her and see how she could, because this was a step up. As we've seen, there is a talent there, but there is also the rawness. She's not, we know she's not the complete product, but this gives us a better chance to yeah. properly forensically examine her. And it, unfortunately, 
her mistake did lead to the third goal. It could have been the clinching third goal for Spurs. What was interesting, though, was after that goal, um, Spurs started to um, to start pulling their players off the uh, off the pitch. So it was likes of um, I think Tur- Turner actually came on at half time. I think it was, but the likes of Thomas, yeah. T- Thomas, Thomas uh, was hauled off. Oh, sorry. Came on. Sorry, no, it's all right. Thomas, uh, go on, continue. Yeah, so yeah, so, yeah. So Thomas Pugula, came off, and, and uh, Pugula I was taken off for the third time. Yeah. So yeah, uh, Percival Zadorski. Lionel came off, and the, yeah, Neville came. Neville came off, and Thomas came off, and they were pulling off all the best players. And I was thinking, hang on a minute, what are they? And I think they thought they were. Go- I think they tried thought we're going to sit this one out. I think they were going to go. We'll sit deep. We're going to try and hold yeah, out for. We'll win. Bus. Part of the bus, exactly. And I can understand that because at the time going into the game, we were both top of the table. Um, they had a better goal difference than us. Mm-hmm. And so thinking, well, if we get the win here, we're pretty much secured qualification. You know, with all the head tests and so forth. And they, and it will be a, a, allegiance is aside. You know. Arsenal hat off. Spurs getting a Conti Cup win at Arsenal is a fantastic result. It's a memorable result and well done to them because they scored three goals massive. at Meadow Park. Massive result for them. And mm-hmm. they, they, let's be honest, they played well. You know, our defence was rubbish, but they, they took advantage of it. They played, um, we're so used to Spurs being this low block team who just tries to, you know, hold out for it. They were actually enterprising and scored three very good goals and were deserved to be in a in a in a fighting chance going into the last 30 minutes but they did default to we're going to try and sit this one out and i think that just gave arsenal just a window just a chance thinking we could maybe because it just gifted yes. the initiative onto us yeah and it helped when we had kara cooney cross like molecule didn't have a great game kara cooney cross ran that midfield and it just every time she's on the ball, I just thought something's going to happen. She's going to have a key moment. She's going to, you know, if it's a cross, assist, a goal, something's going to, everything was yeah. going through her. And just that if there was going to be an equaliser, it's going to involve her somehow. Yeah, as we say, she's magical. Yeah. Um, I am going to talk a bit more about Katrin Molecule because I think her, her performance was great. Apart from the odd mistake, mm. I think she had a really good game. It was good to see some more of her. Matt, what did you make of um, Katrin Molecule? Um, through this game, like she is looking for her first goal for the season. She has, she did have a very good shot on target towards it, but uh, Vojkova picked it up. Um, what are your thoughts on her performance? I get so I'll give it. If I was to give a score out of this, I'd probably give it a seven. She was really good, but she had moments where. If I looked at her Southampton performance, so Southampton was an eight, it was a nine, it wasn't exactly a ten. Um, mm-hmm. But there were moments where she looked a little bit nervy. And Do you think is, that's due to lack of minutes? I think it is. And I have been saying fans, uh, I've been, sorry, I've heard a few whispers, not whisp, well, a few mentions from fans suggesting maybe she might be benefit going out on loan so that she can get those couple of minutes. Um Let's just say transfer, no transfer rumor at all. It's just fan speculation at the moment. There's no, it's just no, conversations no, people no, are having because yeah. of I, her I, age and her inexperience. Yeah. I just think at this moment in time, where where can she benefit benefit from? And I think there are a couple of clubs that could benefit from Katrine. I think she would really enjoy being able to get some minutes. I mean, the squad is quite big, but I, my question would be: mm-hmm. Should anything happen? Um, say an, a, a suspension or something in that midfield I don't know if we've got someone that can definitely fulfill that gap mm. so for me I don't think she'll be going out on loan I imagine if she does go out on loan it'll be next summer and that'll, that'll be to get her more minutes and make sure that she she is up and ready um, but at this moment in time, I th- I think she's going to have these moments and she's going to continue to have these moments unless she gets in, uh, a, a proper run of games. And the only way I see that she has a couple of a, a run of games is a couple of in, a few issues or something further down the line. I'm not going to name them. I'm not Adam and I'm not going <laughs> to. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not going to speculate. But I've, I've, you just I've, don't want me to run I've, at you, do you? No. <laughs> <laughs> that as well. But you, <laughs> worst comes to worst, I don't see Katrine as a bad option. I don't think we've got any bad options. We've got good good alternatives. They're not like for like, but they do a job, and that's what they're there. 
not not the, that's not what they're, what they're about. that's a really weird way of saying it but mm. they they can do a a great job they can they can make sure that they are willing and determined to get those eight nines out of ten try and get that get it as high as possible no definitely um got to 61 minutes double substitution substitution let me get my words out um we had steph catley on for kate and cape Caitlin Ford on for Vivian Meadamore. Mm. I think this is a really high, big highlight of the game. Vivian Meadamore has finally got 61 minutes in mm. one go under her belt. She's back. She looks so good. She Jeez. had a few shots on target. Very yeah. unlucky. Very unlucky. Um, yeah. I would just say, she's, what's even better is she actually had a setback over the summer. She had to have a second operation yes. on her knee. And that's why it's taken a, also another reason why, along the fact that obviously her ACL was the second one along, it's taken a bit longer to get her rehabbed. Um, but yes, as we said earlier, massive milestone, 60 minutes in the tank. I wonder if we'll see her at the weekend. I Maybe. hope so. She likes had, a goal at White Hart Lane. She does. She, so. she scored. Scored. Uh, she scored on both her last two visits there, including a really good volley from a corner. I, I think if she just I come off the bench. That was a Beth Mead assist. Might have been from a corner. It was a wonderful volley. Yes, it was. If, it was fantastic. If she does play, I can see it being a late sub. I can't see her starting that game, sadly. No, I, it's going to be full strength, toe yeah. to toe. I think that game. Um, actually, one of, we we did see in the lineup she was out played out of her usual position, and a lot of our Dutch friends did actually mention it across social media. Um, what were your thoughts, Matt? I'm going to come to you after Adam because mm. I know you probably have some interesting thoughts as well. Oh. I was really confused about where she was playing. I thought she was playing as <laughs> an attacking midfielder, and this uh-huh. isn't the the only time this has happened. Jonas likes to pull. A little uh, ha pranked you. You're play- Kim Little's playing r- right mid, or it'll be mm-hmm. ha Victoria's playing wing back, or something like along those sort of lines. Mm-hmm. And I think I remember mentioning this so many times that this team is so versatile that you you could almost pick any player to play, and they have a secondary position. So at the moment, you could almost play Kim as an attacking midfielder, or if you really wanted to, you could play her on the white right wing. You could play um, Caitlin up front, or, and then drop um, Lesser, uh, Lesser, Alessia up, uh, up into attacking sure, midfielder. Are you sure you you've could... not got lots of Alessia Russo <laughs> banging around your head? <laughs> no, um, I mean, if you really wanted to, you could probably drop Viv into midfield now, now and have like two attack. Well, you could have Le- uh, Alessia and Viv in the attacking midfielder, and then Caitlin up front if you really wanted to. There's so many different angles. I mean, you could even have Ka- uh, Lena Hersig playing left mm. or right, or Chloe on when the left or the right. Mm. Yeah, I've got to feel sorry for Lena Hersig. I do she feel been sorry for her. Mm. It's just not happening for her. I feel really no. sorry. It's just, whatever it is, I, it's a real shame. Cause she, she is in her prime now, and she was yeah. just getting going as well. And I... You just kind of wonder, had she been available, would that game maybe turn a bit, bit differently? Would she have offered something? Um, yeah, because her confidence was more. through the roof when she mm. came back and she looked really good for me personally. Mm. I think there's only one question that remains with Vivian Miedemar at the moment. Mm. Um, and I will ask you both in a second. But Adam, what are your thoughts on um, first positioning on that throughout that game? Because it, it was a strange we were one. kind of baffled as well. I can understand if you were doing like a, a rotation thing. So like something mm-hmm. like, you know, Viv might move centre and, and Frieda might move wide and, you know, you get a bit of flexibility there. I believe it was an experiment by, by Jonas. And of course, if you're going to experiment, I'd rather experiment in the Conti Cup than the WSL. And I think it's good to look at alternative options because you obviously want to get as many, <clears throat> as many of your best players on the pitch at once. It's one of the reasons why we've got Katie McCabe as right back. Um, it's an unorthodox position but he's doing it so he can play his best players and get Katie McCabe in the team at the expense of playing Laurel Maritz. And I do feel sorry for him in that regard. So he's obviously thinking, well, you know, if I want to take Ford off, who could I maybe bring on in her place? He's thinking, well, I know I've got one of the best attacking players in the world. Could she slot in as a left winger? So I think it was an in- intrigue to try it. And she showed a lot of good touches. But I think, again, we all agree her best position is in the middle. So it would you, but again, I, but then I flip back with the Katie McCabe is her best position is not right back, but she's playing there so she can get in the team. So if it means if Viv, 
he may not be playing Viv in the best position, but if you're playing her in a position that gets her in the team and she's still able to express her talents and it doesn't necessarily compromise her defensively, then it's not so bad. Um, and I think there was like plenty of good stuff in attack that happened. There was a lot of good passive interchange of her and McCabe. Cut inside, had a few good passes. There was a moment where she almost set up Lacasse. A brilliant pass with the box, found a castle run, and she just didn't get the connection right. She buries that in the bottom corner. It's an assist for Miedemar, and what an assist it would have been. So, yeah, it's the first time we've seen it. Um, first time Viz probably played it. So, yeah, I can understand if she didn't wasn't, you know, glorious at it. But I think there's potential. But I don't see it as a permanent position for her. I still think her position will be the 10. Oh, no, absolutely. I mean, it, we need to, she needs a bit more time to get back on, I think, personally, for me. Yeah. Um, and that'll be a few games' time. I mean, even Beth's still getting back up on her feet, although she's already scoring, which we're loving at the moment. Um, I think the only question remains, and the real, real question we care, well, we care about with her, is when is that new contract extension coming out from the Arsenal? We don't know. Um, we don't know. Exactly. She was, it, it was it was a one plus one. She activated a, one, a plus one because obviously she's on recovery, so she's here to the end, end of the season. Um, don't know. Don't know. It's it's up in the air. Um, could go either way. What I, what I would say is, and I've been pet got pelted this before, is if under Joe Montemuro we were to have lost Miedemar, we would have been in major, 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 major trouble because everything went through Miedemar. Miedemar is one of the best strikers, best forwards in the world. And, you know, even now, were we to lose her, it would we would feel that loss. But we wouldn't feel that loss as keenly as we would have a few years ago. And we have we're not solely feeding all our all our play into one attacking talent to get us all the goals. We've got we've got a lot of other talent in the team. To the extent that at the moment we haven't had to panically rush Miedemar back into the first team because we desperately need her. We've had the luxury of we can allow Viv to recover on the sidelines and play our team and still win. You know, Miedemar didn't even come off the bench against Chelsea. We didn't need to break class, deploy Miedemar, play a half-fit Miedemar to try and salvage a game because we won it so comfortably. So I, I can take it either way. Um, I'd love if she stayed. I, I think it'd be amazing if she did stay, and I think if she did stay, she will stay, and success will come, and she'll win league titles with us because I'm convinced that, that is going to come around the corner. Um, but if she leaves, then I say, you know, thank you very much for an amazing time at the club. You've been amazing for us, broken records, won trophies, um, brought us lots of laughs, you know, and I think that the team will move on without her and that will be it. I think I think we, we're not we're not in a position where we're, let's say, being chained to it. Like we we have to sign her onto extension, like, say, the men's team have with previous players, you know, and being trapped in a situation where we have to force this player to stay with us. I think next summer it, it could go either way. And I, and I think Arsenal will be fine either way. Um, but I do hope she stays because she's an amazing player. Yeah, I was hoping you was going to say that because that was a very, very interesting goodbye speech. Um, <laughs> just say playing both, playing just, it both just, ways. Just so everybody knows, she's not going anywhere. We don't yeah. know what's going on. <laughs> and Adam just got a bit carried away with these little monologues there. Um, but Matt, if you've got anything to add to that, I think some. I think it, if anything, they would have had this conversation, and there's. A group of them at the moment that are near the end of their contract, they have extended. Beth's won them, and she did her ACL, and then the contract was announced. A little bit of a huge relief for her, a little bit of a huge relief for the team, a little bit of help, help, yes, the fans as well. Uh, not not forgetting fans. I think at this moment in time, I I wouldn't be surprised if she stayed for another year. And the only reason I'm saying it, it's next year is because she's on, she's she's just finished her recovery. So essentially, she's half the player that she was before it. We don't know what's going to happen afterwards. I mean, there have been players that haven't been as good as they were before the injury, and there have been players that have gone right. Okay, I'm not going to let this um, define who I am. I'm going to make sure that I come back fitter, stronger. Uh, better make sure i'm taking care of myself viv is a huge advocate for mental health as well and i i just have a feeling that something's going to come and i i I mean that like it's going to be announcement either towards the end of this month or it might be towards the end of the season where we find out the decision i i think she stays and that's just my opinion i i've I know nothing. I'm not. I'm not one of these 
in the nose. In the nose. It, let's just say idiots yeah. running around uh, claiming to be a um, journalist. Uh, have a, have a, <laughs> no, it's not that. It's more of the case of saying you've got information and then hiding behind a uh, almost evil with the back to a profile fit, a picture of a player or a, f- a cartoon character, whatever it may be. It's not you. You're you're yeah. hiding behind something. So then you've got a protection in inverted quotes i'm going on a rant here i should say yeah you got we've been um, but I, I, if, if, I, I if think just on fifth i just yeah. think it's, if, i think the contract on the table it's up to her again like adam said if she goes not a problem but i think it's gone it's going to be too soon i think it's the season after i would hope if she does stay it's announced earlier than like last season where we had to go through the entire season oh. not knowing and it just sort of hung over us even as far as that west ham game after that west was, ham it, game. yeah exactly and it was touch and go <laughs> touch and go i think it, i would like it if they announced it let's say over the christmas break you know if it was announced mm. like the beth mead one was yeah during the winter break so then we know going you know already before we come back it's like established we, we know who we've got and who we haven't got because it's not nice going into the summer with with question marks hanging over the head of certain players and yet you have to you feel like you're gonna have to convince them so um hopefully the the contract management team are on it and what will be will be no absolutely couldn't agree more right we're on the final home stretch of the pod to now uh 68 minutes back to the game An own goal by spurs defender amy turner yes and they make it 3-3 for the Arsenal. Uh, bit of an odd header for me as she's trying to mark up, mark Alessia Russo. Actually, it's Kadima. cross. No, it was Alessia Russo. I have watched that back about four times. And I can see 23. Sorry, was his, it was, was his Turner? Yes. Yeah, she had Kadina on the back. She had Kadina behind her. That's why the, 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 the TV people thought Kadina had scored. That's why Kadina's name was on the website. Right. Okay. Because that looked like it looked like Leslie to me. But okay. okay. Cool. Whatever. Yeah. Um, <laughs> okay. No, Welcome to say, let's just say Leia Kadina. Mm. Um, after a, a free kick was given to Cooney Cross, thanks to Grace Clinton. Was that pure luck or was it Spursy to go what? level? Can we I just can't say, say this question seriously. I really can't. Cooney Cross, that is an unbelievable free kick. Honestly, I would say that's that's yep. when that is when you've hit it on the sweet spot. That is undefendable. It's undefendable free kick. It's it's in the what they would call the corridor of uncertainty. They've whipped it around the defence, who are now having to race towards their goal. The keeper can't come out and get it because it's too far away from her, and it's literally going to land on well, Kadina Russo, whoever it was. I believe it's Kadina Russo, whoever. Turner's in an impossible position. She has to head that ball clear, but because of her trajectory and the spinner. Very limited place where she could head it, and so she does. She just heads it into her own net. She's obviously not trying to, but she was put in a possible position. And that own goal is is the situation is generated from that car recurring cross delivery, which was so good. And it won't go down as an assist for her, sadly, because it's an own goal. I don't think on the on the stats thing, or maybe it does. I don't know. Not on the website. It does. Please, so, the, well, it does. The, the, uh, the BBC had it up as an assist, but again, again, they could have got that wrong. It was if if yeah I don't know if on these like um, fancy football things if assists for own goals count towards points because I don't really follow that. Um, the Continental Tires Cup and the FA Cup aren't on fantasy footballs. Ah, yeah. Okay. Yes, yeah, so that's a shame. Yeah, so WSL has only just launched. But yeah. So. Um, yeah. But it was a superb. It's a stupid free kick the Spurs gave away. Arsenal worked the situation, won the free kick. Great mm-hmm. delivery, three all. Um, it's just like well we've done it again. We've saved ourselves again. Uh, and it was just like, well, what more has this game got to give? Um, I was winding up and saying I wanted a four-all draw because that would be fantastic. And you and Luce just gave me evils. I can't think why. Um, but it just goes... It goes it he just, was it goes, stressed. Yes, but I guess it just goes to show that not all my jinxes work. Um, <laughs> they do. You predicted a draw on penalties and what happened? I'm not going to rant at you again. I didn't predict a draw. I said that's what happened. Last... Me. I said... Yeah, I said, you I said, said it last, and it I said it was going to be... So I, you're I didn't, a jinx. I didn't you say are it was jinx. going to happen. That's it. End of story. <laughs> End of story. But you were changed. It, it was three all. I'm not having this argument on the podcast with you again. Three all. Brilliant game of football. Brilliant spirit showed by the team to come back from adversity three times in the game. Question marks over Spurs of their game management. Um, what I would say is I think it became the case of us really pushing for the win for the winner to make it four three. Spurs had a few moments on the counter, and what I would say, there was a moment I think. Um, 
uh, Jen Beatty got caught, gave away a stupid free kick and, and got booked for it. Um, there was a moment Sabsk had to come up, rush out and make a save. There was a cross, there was a, I think it was maybe even Naz who had a shot across goal that just went wide. So Spurs were sniffing on the counter, but we were having most of the ball up their end. And it was just, if, could this be a Kadena partnership that we were going to have to basically ride to the finish line now with all the subs we've thrown on? Could it just hold itself together and you know for the rest of the game? Thankfully, somehow it did. Um, we did have chances. We did have moments. Maybe we could have got the winner. It didn't happen. And it finished three all. And I was quite excited because I I'd never had a penalty shootout before. I never had the pleasure of enjoying a penalty shootout in a in a football ground. So this was all new for me. You know, it was all rather rather exciting. Yeah, plus the fact we didn't know what Sabrina D'Angelo was like on the old pens. No, we didn't. So I think that was the highlight for me, if I'm we, honest with you. We've only seen her against one penalty, and that was against Bethany England at um at Yeah, Spurs but Australia. even I wouldn't jump on that. No, even not exactly. Even I wouldn't, that. exactly. The goalkeepers union spoke on that pod on that episode. Even he wouldn't do it. No, 100%. So we had a better ground, uh, so I was more hopeful we'd see some, uh, some dives. Uh, on that particular pitch. Yeah, I think another highlight of the aftermath of this uh, own goal is all the the m- mistake of the big media outlets giving Leia Kadena her first Arsenal goal. Mm. Matt, it's becoming an irregular occurrence now. It really shouldn't be ha- happening, should it? No, but I can see why they gave it as Leia Kadena's goal, a goal because it does look like it's coming from Leia. I would actually question that. Because, I'm not going to question the referee or anything like that, but it does look like Leia's pushed her into the into um, into the ball, and that's why it's ended in the back of the net. Um, it's one of those games where because there's no extra referee and that you're kind of thankful because <laughs> she gets. Away, let's just put it this way: she gets away with it, and it's and it's um, it's one of those where. They can argue, but the, the decision's made. It's a goal. It's back in the game. It's it last couple of minutes to play. Game on. Try and get something out of this. Yeah. And you was kind of thinking at that time, you need to, it, What really frustrated me was there was too much dilly dallying at the back. Too much. We'll we'll play, we'll pass it around. Pass it around. Not enough urgency to go forward and go and get that win. And it felt so weird because it's very unlike Arsenal to try and do do that unless they're seeing out a game. They were like, pressing um, Kadena. We know we saw every time the ball was so ball was popped on the back, and they were targeting Kadena with a high press. They saw her as the, the weak link in the defence, and it didn't help that we were, as you say, slowly passing around the centre backs because it just invited Spurs to get the to get the run on us. Unless that was the idea to try and get them to bait, go bait higher the, up, bait the press, and then and then play it into Kyra or. Mm. Katrine and they would play that long ball out wide. Potentially, potentially. No, absolutely. I think I think the weirdest thing about this North London derby for me, although it was the Conti Cup, no disrespect to the Conti Cup, the WSL North London derby is just bigger for me. Um, was it strange not seeing Caitlin Ford score and not capitalising on her opportunities against Tottenham Hotspur? She was very close, Adam. She was close. She had a few good moments. Um, but it's... I just... No. I, for me, no. I just thought it was such a bonkers game. Everything was happening. So it didn't surprise me that Ford didn't get on the score sheet. Um, in fairness, she had to come off the bench. Um, it's not like she was there from the start. So, no, it wasn't really a surprise. It was just... as I wanted to score, but I wanted everybody to score. But no, no one else did. It finished three all. Um but you know, it, no, it was. I hope she's just saving her goals for the weekend. That, that's what I'm thinking. Is she's going to saving them for the weekend, and we go to White Hart Lane, and then she will, wherever it's called now, the Spurs Stadium. That's where all her goals are going to come from. I hope so because I've got her as my captain for this weekend. I have to that um, for the Bills fantasy football. Uh, Matt, I know you're not Caitlin's biggest fan, but I'm going to ask you this anyway. All right. This is the type of games where you want her to make sure she, she gets in on the, uh, the action. And what probably didn't help is that her first attempt, I think it was her first attempt, went wide. And then it's just think, right, OK, is it going to be one of these games where you just aren't able to hit hit the ball in the, to the back of the net? Um, I look back on the game against Chelsea. She had a really fantastic game against Chelsea. Um, 
no doubt about that. But she, the only thing missing from that game against Chelsea, she could have quite easily had a goal. She decided not to uh, shoot a couple of times. She, she decided to be unselfish and put the ball into the uh, into the box for others, um, which is which is what I've been calling for. But it's a, it's getting that balance and. It, at times, it felt like she she got, she got really selfish. So I'm hoping she can find that balance of not shooting too much and knowing when not to shoot and finding that person. So not not saying what she usually does. She goes by the by line and then deciding to shoot literally near the front post and the goalkeeper's there. I don't want to see that. I want to see her do that cut back into that six yard box and someone comes in and runs into it. I want I want to see her shooting. When she's got to, I'll go back to when it was North London derby, and they, uh, I think it was Viv played played the um, the Beth Mead ball, which is essentially the ball go, goes into her. You got all the time in the world, and she goes right. Okay, if you're not going to close me down, I'm going to level this into the back of that, and that's what she does best. And hopefully, we see more of that this Saturday than we saw it on Wednesday night. No, I couldn't agree more there, but I just want to, I want North London Derby Caitlin Ford to come out and play. <laughs> <laughs> Don't we all? Um, I think just to wrap up the show, because we are running over at the minute, I want your thoughts on the penalties. Um, I want the goalkeeper's union's thoughts on Sabrina the Andres. Brilliant. <laughs> brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. <laughs> Loved it. Loved it. And even better, it came, off, it came off the post. The first one, dive across, gets the right way, gets a clean connection on it, tips onto the post and away. Brilliant. And that's what you need in the shootout. You want to get that first save in. So you, you got before you even on the scoreboard, you've got the advantage, providing you, you do convert it, which thank God Russo did because I was nervous, like, like it was at the Chelsea game. I think she's put the Paris FC horror behind her because she scored in the shootout. Um, yeah, love Sabrina. Got the crucial save in and um, it gave us the momentum to take on the rest of the shootout. No, absolutely. I think the highlight for me was uh, Sabrina saving Naz's goal. Yeah. It's like, no, you're not having your act trick. Nope. Get <laughs> putting my foot down. That was the absolutely. highlight of the penalties for me. Mm. But there's counted. a certain other defender yeah. that we need to absolutely yeah, Jen Beattie. praise. Well, I'm going to give it to Matt. Yeah, and then because it. Adam dropped down <laughs> my throat more or less <laughs> straight away. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. And I had it finished. But Matt, floor's yours. Yes, um, I think that first one from Sabrina. I knew she was going to save it. You just, when you're a goalkeeper, you have those instincts of where people are going to go. And you never, and I know there's all different techniques, the towels, the putting the instructions under your shin pads and things like that, um, all that research. Sometimes the best judge is your instincts. And Sabrina just went with her instincts. And the relief, as well as the celebration afterwards, you would have thought she would have won the FA Cup. And that I've got that video saved because they've released it on the Arsenal Women TikTok, and I will go back and I will watch that, and I'll it will be like a happy video, like the Martin Martinez getting hit in the face from Jorginho. <laughs> that kind of all happiness. The ball, all the ball bounced off the post onto his yeah. head and into the net. That yeah. is one of my favourites. It's, it's just oh, I'm feeling down. You know what's going to say? Make it really nice. I'm going to sit and watch Sabrina's save again. And yeah, you talked about Jen Beattie. I think you've got to praise the entire of the team that stepped forward for those penalties. I know Jen probably was not willing to take that that fifth penalty, but I mm. think because of her experience, Jonas pushed her forward a little bit more. Mm. And I think we only missed one, but one out of the five. So yeah, yeah, happy with that. Absolutely, absolutely. I think that Ford needs to buy Yen BT a couple of Christmas cards and some um, some sweet chocolates as well because she bailed her out there. I mean, you're saying Ford couldn't didn't, couldn't seem to score a goal when she normally does. She missed the penalty. It was it was for Ford to win the game for us and she fumbled it. Exactly. Thankfully, Yen BT did. I do have mixed feelings on Yen BT because yes, it was a brilliant penalty, top bin. She's the hero. She's won us the game. It does kind of feel like you're selling yours almost um, praising the arsonists of putting out the fire that they've just created you know why don't you put yeah because we were three goals down because of having her and Kadena in the back four and we weren't defensively secure but there's an element of atonement and retribution that she scores the winning penalty we win the game it's it's not three points it's only two um but it's one more than spurs and it puts us top of the group 
we're in control now. We just have to beat Reading next year, and we top the group, and we're into the quarterfinals. Um, I ex- I very much expect that we will play do the exact same thing, and we'll play Kadina Beatty as our back four. But hopefully, away at Reading, it won't be as bad as it was last night. <laughs> oh, hopefully, hopefully not. Um, but that is it for this pod. We have been. But I uh, recording back to back on two double episodes, which will be up very soon. Or actually I should say they are up now. Mm. What am I talking about? I'm yeah. <laughs> <laughs> By the time you listen to this, they will be up. <laughs> um but that is it from us tonight. Exactly, it will be up. Mm. Um and I'm just gonna sign off the pod and say we'll see you on Friday for our Tottenham Hotspur preview in the WSL. Mm-hmm. And Adam is back in the driving seat, so make sure you tune in. Mm.